my attention So I shift my gaze in your direction
Good morning, Orchard Kids, and welcome back. If you don't know me, my name is Topher, but you can call me Gopher Loafer or Tofu. Call me what you want, and I won't lose my composure. No, sir. And I am so excited that you are joining us this morning because it is our first Sunday in May, which means it's our first Sunday in our brand new series about commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. Say that with me. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. So many things in our lives require commitment from us. If we want to memorize our Bible verses each month, it's going to take some commitment. We have to make a plan to memorize them and then put that plan into practice. If you want to run in a 5K or a marathon, you know what? You're going to have to train, which means you're going to have to have commitment. You're going to have to make a plan and put that plan into practice and get ready for that run. We need commitment in our relationship with God too. We need to make a plan and put it into practice so that we can learn to be more and more like God. In the Bible, it tells us this, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8. Say that with me. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. 1 Timothy 4, 8. That's right. Training your body is of some value, especially if you want to do something physical. If you want to be on a basketball team or you want to play football or you want to play golf, all of that stuff, you need to train, you need to practice, you need to make sure you know what you're doing and make sure that you don't hurt yourself. But the most important thing is that we know that God loves us and that he loves every other person. And then we can show that love to others. That's the most important thing. And that's what this verse is telling us. And that's exactly what we're gonna hear in our Bible story today. So without further ado, here are our friends at The So-and-So Show. What are you doing, John? Trying to finish 5K. You know that's not how 5Ks work, right? What? There's a lot of fiber in this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And yeah, now that's how 5K is supposed to work. Way to go. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And welcome, welcome to the So and So Show. Brandon and I have committed to run a 5K. Why? I'm not sure. Someone 
thought it was a good idea. Uh -huh. Well, when you commit to running a race, you need to make a plan on how to get yourself ready and stick to that plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do one of those training apps that you can get on your phone. There's, there's one called Couch to 5K that mm -hmm. looks really good, but then John said- I said we couldn't do that. No app is gonna prepare us for the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, or the ebbs and flows of running a race. Have you ever actually run a race? No, no. but that's, that's beside the point. Racing is like life. You never know what life is gonna throw at you. Mm -hmm. It's unpredictable. Yeah. So I developed a training course myself that will take us through unpredictable situations in multiple climates, so we'll be prepared for anything. The real race might throw at us. Okay, but you know that we're running the 5K in the spring on a city street. Okay, so let's talk multiple. more practice. Come on, buddy. Let's go to the course. High knees, high knees. Sigh. Okay, why, why are we doing this? There's no way we're gonna be running in the snow, right? Because you have to be prepared, Brandon. When you commit to something, you have to be ready for any outcome. And we have had some late spring snowstorms. When? You know, in the spring of 1978. It is not gonna snow, John. <laughs> you can't predict the weather, Brandon. And switch. Oh. Okay. Oh, now we're in the desert? This will never happen. What? We, we, we can make a wrong turn in a race and end up in the desert. Oh, flying cactus! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. oh, and switch! Oh! Seriously, John! <laughs> this is getting out of hand! Practice! Wow! Makes! Oh! Perfect! Oh! Oh! And switch! <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is more like it. This is what we should be training for. Wait for it. I want what? my two dollars! Ow! What was that? <laughs> it's a paper boy. He's ruthless. Huh? Oh, heads up! What? Ow! <laughs> Can we stop now, please? I think we're prepared! Two dollars! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're that prepared. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. Look out! Whoa! Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Oh, we're training for a 5K. Yeah, we're practicing commitment, duck. Oh. Ah, <coughs> well, that's what I'm talking about today. I mean, not running and dodging newspapers, but the commitment part. Oh well, great, take it away, Kellen. This comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, 1 Corinthians was a letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the Jesus followers in the city of Corinth. Paul wrote the letter to encourage people to stay committed to living the way Jesus would want them to live. This letter is like a speech a coach might give a team to really get them pumped up. It starts like this. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Pretty inspiring stuff, but I think we could do it even better. Help me out, cheer squad. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? Are you ready to commit? I was born ready. Mm -hmm. Who is ready to run this race? I am. Who is ready to run this race? That's me. When you are running, here's what we advise. You should run in a way that will get you the Awesome. But just to be clear, I don't think Paul was telling us to go out and literally start running. Really? Really? Really. I think Paul was comparing our lives to a race. When you're in a race, you do the best you can, right? It takes commitment and practice. But when you're running with a goal in mind, the finish line, it's the same with your life. You should try to do the best in life. It'll take commitment and it'll take practice, but the goal should be to live your life like there's a prize at the end. Now, Paul gave us a hint in what that prize could be. He wrote, all who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. 
Now, the people reading this letter in Paul's day would have known the kind of crown you could win in a race. It would be made of leaves or pine needles, and it wouldn't last very long. But Paul wrote that Jesus' followers should be running for a crown that will last forever. Take it, cheer squad. Yo, Jackie! Yes, it is! Do you want to win? Always! <laughs> Winning a race gives you a crown, but it will not. That's great, cheer squad. Now that we know the kind of race we're training for, the question is, how do we train? How do you practice life? Well, you can start with these four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. Hear means we should practice hearing from God by reading the Bible or listening for his wisdom. Pray means we should practice talking to God, telling him how great he is and asking him for help and forgiveness. Talk is practicing talking about God with others. It's asking questions when we don't understand something and sharing the good news with people who haven't heard about Jesus. And live means we practice living for God. We try and think about God before every choice we make and do things in a way that honor Him. That's how you train for the race of life. Let's hear one more from the cheer squad. Ooh, hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? I'm ready to lace up my kicks and oh. run this race. I hear you. Let's slay this thing. On your mark, get set, go. Are you in? T-H-A-T race Are you gonna run like you want first place? Are you in T-H-A-T race? Then practice like you mean it and you'll be an ace Are you in T-H-A-T race? Remember four words that will help your case Are you in T-H-A-T race? Hear, pray, talk, live, now start today Thanks, cheer squad. Woo! Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I think I'm ready to run the 5K now. I think I'm ready for anything now. Two dollars! Oh, hoo -hoo! see? <laughs> it's true. When we train, when we practice, it prepares us for things, well, we might not see coming. You just got to remember those four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. That's great, Kellen. Hey, thanks. You bet. See you next time. Bye. You know, it just occurred to me, we should get one of those running apps you can get on your phone. It'd be way simpler. <laughs> you ever hear of Catch to 5K? Reveal the question. How does practice help you? John? I practice soccer all the time. And now I can do this. Ooh. <laughs> Nice. Thank you. What about you? Uh, when, when I practice playing an instrument, it helps me learn it so well that I can do it without even thinking about it. Like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who doesn't love the beautiful tones of the mouth harp? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? How does practice help you? In sports or at school or in life. Talk about it together and we'll see you next week for a brand new show! Yay! <laughs> Name that tune. Okay. It's the theme to name that tune. Yeah, you got it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> oh, the paper boy's back. Oh. Okay. No. No. Stop it. Switch. Give him his two dollars. I don't have the. I don't have any pockets. Oh no! This. Oh, we're getting attacked. They threw an ostrich. What? How dare you? They're flightless. Uh, oh. Okay. Switch. <sighs> oh, good. A living room. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's, let's see what's on. Oh, a marathon. Oh, great. You ever been to a marathon? Can they do CG couches? Jesus said the most important thing is to love God and to love others. 
And to do that, we need to have a plan. We need to put a plan into practice. And maybe that plan looks something like this. We need to hear from God. And that's probably going to happen through our Bible. If we read his word, he's always speaking to us, telling us things that we need to know to live our best lives and to help the people around us live their best lives too. Next, we need to pray to God. We need to talk with God. We need to let him know what's going on in our lives, even though he already knows. We need to take the effort and the initiative to make a connection with God from our side because he's always trying to connect with us. Third, we can talk about God with others. If you have friends who love God, talk about him with them. Talk about what's going on in your life, what he's teaching you. Ask what he's teaching them. And finally, we can live for God every single day. When you practice loving God and loving others, you'll live out what Paul was talking about when he said that we run in such a way as to win the prize. And remember, that prize is a crown that will last forever. God is always with you, and he can help you practice loving him and loving others. Here's what we need to remember today. Keep practicing what matters most. Say that with me. Keep practicing what matters most. And now, let's practice our second step by praying to God and asking him to help us with all of this. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Thank you for giving us a race to run every single day. Help us practice what matters most, loving you and loving other people. Help us remember to hear from you, pray to you, talk about you, and live fully for you. We love you, God, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, that is it for this morning. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we will see you next week. Bye.